Let me tell you what farming was really like back then. In those days, we didn't just feed people. We actually managed our land and natural resources. We nourished our communities with food that we grew and harvested in harmony with nature. We shared our huli and seeds freely and passed them on to the next generation. Crops adapted so well to local conditions. Ecosystems were healthy, diverse, and abundant as our food. Then came the colonialists. They sold us the propaganda that our food systems and innovations weren't enough. Not enough to feed the world. Not modern enough. The truth is, it just wasn't profitable enough for them. So they built plantations and brought in agrochemical and seed companies. Today, all over the world, these corporations dictate the entire way we produce our food. Most of our farms have become dependent on agrochemicals. Instead of cultivating our own seeds, we've become accustomed to buying them. Many of these seeds have been genetically modified to be used with agrochemicals. For instance, the growth of herbicide-resistant GM crops has dramatically increased the use of herbicides. Herbicides that are linked to cancer and other serious diseases. In Brazil, they are using increasingly toxic, sometimes banned pesticides, along with genetically modified crops. The phenomenon is simple, really. Weeds, when sprayed with a chemical over and over again, become stronger. Larger and stronger doses of herbicides are needed to kill them. Pests also grow resistant to the toxin inside genetically modified crops and need more insecticides to kill. It's a vicious cycle of poison and profit for these companies. Farmers and workers like us often have no choice but to become a part of this marketplace system. And we're lacking policies that support us in escaping this treadmill that have negative impacts all over the world. Let's start with the Americas. Instead of native corn varieties and other diverse crops, we see genetically modified corn blanket the landscape. In Hawaii and Puerto Rico, lands and waterways previously devoted to growing food were converted to GM seed testing fields. As a result, the most fertile islands in the world are now dangerously food insecure. Toxic pesticides used in these fields are linked to illnesses of workers. Pesticides also drift to neighboring communities, which can reach and poison many families. In Argentina, the rise in cancer and birth defects is attributed to high pesticide use in places where GM crops are grown. For most farmers in Asia, buying GM seeds and increasing amounts of chemical inputs can bury them in debt. Ironically, these food producers get poorer and hungrier. In India, many commit suicide as their only way out of the debt trap. GM crops are present in many food products, but most consumers don't even know that their food has genetically modified organisms and are associated with toxic pesticides. In Venezuela, a lot of imported food is genetically modified. Their prices can easily be manipulated and cause food insecurity. They tell us that biotechnology can save the world. But why hasn't biotechnology saved South Africa? 90% of their staple food is genetically modified. Yet a quarter of South Africans remain hungry and food insecure. That's because farmers don't really need saving. Our traditional crops and farming practices can feed the world if only they are allowed to flourish without the pressures of the agrochemical industry. That's why movements everywhere are pushing back. In Colombia, people are setting up community seed houses and GMO-free territories. In Bangladesh, crop failures have led farmers to stop planting GM eggplant. In the Philippines, farmers are determined to stop the commercialization of golden rice. Many farmers and workers have grown to realize that we don't need GMOs to feed the world. Because what the world needs, really, is us. It needs us to take back control, to once again become caretakers of land, 
water, and our non-human relatives to make sure that we grow food that is good for the people and the planet. To do that, we must honor and practice our collective wisdom through agroecology. It has always been agroecology that has fed the world and made us who we truly are, nourishers of the earth and of the people. I know that many of you can't imagine what farming was like back then, but I know that you are all imagining a future that is a lot better. Let that future be a seed that you choose, a seed that you save, a seed that you share and pass on to the next generation.